The streets will never make you grow. It's not a seed, it's a gutter. There's no happy endings in this life. So this is my message to you. The streets will never love you back. Hi, friends. This is the showrunner for Jimmy Calandra's Bath Avenue story. Allow me a few moments to share some thoughts as we give thanks this Memorial Day weekend. On Monday, we celebrate all who keep America safe. To our veterans, to those in harm's way, and are actively serving in the armed forces at all corners of the world. To our first responders, the police, the fire, and the emergency service personnel, not just here in New York, but throughout America. We pray for you. We celebrate your service. We mourn for the dearly departed who pay the ultimate sacrifice so that we may be free. Throughout the last several months, the Bath Avenue Story platform has evolved as Jimmy Calander's life has evolved and changed. In part, this was because Jimmy, like so many others who are his loyal followers, have worked hard to turn their lives around, having come back from unspeakable tragedy and sadness, as well as personal struggle and traumatic experiences from early on in life. Many of you have shared your personal stories on this very platform. And for Jimmy, his change and amends occurred by seeking redemption. But with change also come the attraction of certain elements that I shall refer to only as the evil YouTube wotard crazies that seek to destroy Jim, his family of followers, and this platform. Why is it? Why is it that with great comeback stories come grave peril? Why? Many people today have become more and more disconnected and disjointed as a result of violence in our communities, the isolation caused by the COVID pandemic, and an endless litany of leftist policies that terror at the fabric of traditional families and America's core values and inner soul. For some, the result has been a twisted need to displace pent-up anger and hatred directed at anyone seeking resolution and reconciliation. Plainly stated, good versus equal, change versus a return to death in the streets. And so here is Jimmy's message to you the Calandra family of followers. To all of Jimmy's friends and followers who have likewise turned their lives around and achieved great heights, we all have a huge responsibility to God and to our friends and family. Stay the course, stay on the straight and narrow path, stay strong and stay clean. Trust in God and your higher power whatever that might be, have faith in yourself and all that you hold dear, the families and friends that you love and who love you. On this Memorial Day weekend, God bless each and every one of you, whether you are with us or not. And most importantly of all, God bless America. And now, please sit back and enjoy the show. What's up, guys? Well, <clears throat> today I got a bad day of new story. I'm not sure if I'm going live today. If I do, it might be 5, 6 o'clock. It's not going to be at 4. It's a beautiful day out there. I'm going to go out there, enjoy my day with my kids and some of my family members. And I hope you guys are doing the same. Well, this is a time where we want to acknowledge 
and give recognition to all the servicemen that fought for this country, that died for this country, and continue to uh, allow us to have our freedom. This is a great country that we live in. I'm not too crazy about the government, but uh, the country is the best country on this planet, that's for sure. So before I even start this video, I want to say a prayer for myself and also for you guys, okay? Thank you, Father, for your love and forgiveness. Thank you for searching and, face and finding me again. Thank you for never leaving me alone. I pray for a new life in Christ, dear Lord. I am a new person today, and that is because of you. My past is simply that, my past. I am a new man today, living the life you intended. I am blessed that I now see your love, Father, and I humbly ask for forgiveness of my past. Today, I choose to follow your path. Today, I will be grateful for life and everything you allow me to have. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Well, Today, I'm going to tell a story about Tommy Karate, Tommy Patera. Now, as you guys know, Tommy Patera was from my neighborhood. He was a bad guy. He was not a good guy. You know, we have this thing where, you know, we look up to bad people in the neighborhood. So the bad people are the good people, and the good people aren't so good. You know, so uh, this is a story about Tommy Patera. He grew up in Gravesend, Brooklyn. And uh, as he was growing up, he was bullied as a kid. Tommy Karate wasn't, uh, you know, he didn't grow up as this tough kid, nothing like that. He was bullied. And eventually when he went into his teens, maybe 19, 20 years old, uh, he started taking martial arts to protect himself as far as defense. From there, he went to Japan. He uh, received uh, a degree in a black belt. I'm not sure what he moved up to. It might have been a third degree or something, but uh, he wasn't a 10 degree. And as a kid, what he used to do was he used to cut animals, maybe birds and cats. And this is something he liked to do. And people didn't know this, but there was a family member that eventually found a dead kitten or something in the yard. And they put two and two together. And he started uh, like doing surgeries on them, cutting them up and chopping them up. This is what he did. And as he got older, he started to like the wise guys. He was friendly with Frankie Lino, Eddie Lino, and he got straightened out in the Bonanno crime family. Frankie Lino was his captain. I'll throw up a couple photos. There's a photo of Joe Messina, Tommy Karate in the middle, and that's Frankie Lino in the middle. Now, I also want to say, you know, growing up in my neighborhood, meeting a guy like Tommy Karate, my friend Paulie Galino wanted to be similar like Tommy Karate because the bad guys in my neighborhood get the respect. And the good guys that go to work, they get no respect. That's how twisted the streets are. So Paulie Galino sees Tommy Karate, and not only Tommy Karate, other wise guys in the street. Uh, a guy like Anthony Sparrow. Anthony Sparrow has these young kids, me and my friends, doing errands for him. And, uh, you know, we see the power Anthony has, and eventually, we want to be like him. That's a photo of Anthony Sparrow with Tommy Karate, a walk talk, wise guy talk. Uh, this is probably a time when uh, Tommy Karate just killed Joe Pizza for Anthony Sparrow. And this is what happened when Paulie G started looking up to Tommy Karate. Paulie G wanted to be like him. And he started killing because Tommy Karate had his back. So he couldn't do any wrong, Paulie Galino, because he knew 
if he needed Tommy, Tommy was there for him. And Tommy was there for him. Tommy had many sit downs for him. Paulie G became very good friends with him. And Paulie G wanted to become just like him. And Paulie G had a little power because he was liked by him. Here's another photo of Frankie Lino. That was Tommy Karate's captain. So eventually, Tommy Karate becomes a wise guy. And he gets made into the Bonanno crime family. When he gets made into the Bonanno crime family, he has a lot to prove because nobody really had respect for him. He started making a name for himself when he started killing people. He became a drug guy on the street, robbing drug dealers, killing drug dealers, and even killing good people. He chopped off Phyllis Birdie's head. Uh, he asked Frankie Ganji to uh, bring her to an apartment. When she got to the apartment, he... Uh, shot her in the head and if he shot her in the head he chopped her head off so you know i see a lot of comments on youtube free tommy karate you know you people that want to free tommy karate i'm going to tell you you people have to be twisted this guy was not a nice guy that's a hundred percent you know this guy will kill you in a minute okay or kill people you love in a minute but unfortunately holy g Loved Tommy Karate, and he wanted to be just like him. Paulie G was the leader of our crew, the Bath Avenue crew. And if you look at the neighborhoods, whether it's Gravesend, whether it's Bensonhurst, all these young kids wanted to be like a Tommy Karate, killing people. Tommy Reynolds in the middle, he had five bodies underneath his belt. Okay? And uh, he looked up to these people the same way. Georgie Conti, he looked up to uh, a few other people in the neighborhood, Jerry Papa. And this is why all these young kids that grow up in Bensonhurst that fall to the street, there's only two endings for them. It's death or prison. All my friends growing up are either dead or in prison. And it's a sad story. This is the reason why I continue to keep on talking about this. Tommy Karate eventually had a lot to prove. He took the hit for John Gotti. He killed Willie Boy Johnson. Willie Boy Johnson was a tough guy. He was an undercover cooperator. And he ends up killing Willie Boy. When he killed Willie Boy, that was one of his most famous hits. And, uh... He liked what he did. He did it well. And when he killed Willie Boy, he shot Willie Boy like maybe 12 times just in the head. You know, he wanted to make an example and show John Gotti, you know what? I'm capable. If I could do anything else for you, just reach out. And you know what? I'm at your disposal. And this is how Tommy Karate was. He was a guy you could never trust and you could never be friend because he's your friend today. And you know what? He's putting a bullet in your head tomorrow, and he's killing you. So these are the people I looked up to. And looking back on my life and my friends' lives, Oli Galino's dead. His own friends killed him. Little George Adamo, murdered. Chestnut, murdered. Michael Marola, murdered. And that's how that outcome is. It's either you're getting killed or you're going to prison. And if Paulie G didn't get murdered, he would be in jail right now. The same thing with Chestnut. So my message to you is do the right thing in life. That's what you need to do. Make your parents proud. Don't follow the way of the street. The streets are never going to love you back. I send this message because inside of me, I look back on my life and what I had to do to cooperate and to get out of my trouble. Okay, uh, my first bid, six years in prison. After that, just for my cooperation, I got eight. Now, when I was away, my own friends killed my best friend, Paulie Galino. And right there and then, even though I knew that they're the ones who did it, I didn't know until I read the paperwork that they're the ones who killed Paulie G. So, you know what? Me and my friends, we could have all had a good life maybe had good jobs, uh, attending each other's weddings, christenings, 
uh, you know, uh, running around with each other's children and stuff like that. But we didn't have that opportunity. We didn't have that happen in our lives. Our lives were destroyed because we looked up to the local wise guys in the neighborhood. And this is a pattern in my neighborhood. A guy like Tommy Karate, he did the same thing. At one time, Tommy Karate was a good kid. But you know why? Eventually, when you see these guys, you go in their social club, they pat you on the back, they say you're a good boy, stuff like that. You know why you're doing erring for them? By the time you know it, now you're underneath their wing and they're giving you jobs to do, whether it's uh, beating somebody up, dropping an envelope off, maybe collecting some money, and then you know what? You're murdering some somebody and your whole life is destroyed. And you know what? That first murder that you commit is going to be on your back forever because the feds, they can knock on your door at any time and pick you up for that. You could be a grandfather at the age of 65 years old. Your life could be such a great life. You have your family there, but you know what? Eventually you got to pay the price. But also what I want to say is that, you know, everyone thinks that Tommy Karate was so tough. You know, he wasn't as tough as you guys think he was. You give him this platform that he's so tough. He wasn't that tough because when the feds knocked on his door and they flipped him over and they broke his nose, you know what? He wasn't that tough. He was only tough with a gun, like all these other guys in the street. They're only tough with a gun. So I have to give credit to law enforcement, to all the servicemen that fought for this country and continue to fight for this country and do the right thing to the local police and all the good people out there, the communities, the neighborhoods that all stick together and want to make sure the community is good because you have to take care of your community because at any time you have these young kids looking up to the wrong people. You have to show them that there's good people out there. And when I was a kid, in my neighborhood, Bad Devon, you know what? There wasn't too many good people. There was a few. But looking up to the wise guys, that's what you wanted to be with. And that's why all our lives were destroyed. With that said, I hope everyone has a great day today. I'm not sure if I'm going to be uh, coming on later on. If I do, I'll put it out there. It'll be maybe 6 o'clock later on because uh, I'm going to enjoy this day with my kids. I'm going to ride... Uh, my bike with my daughter, and we're going to have a nice time today. And I hope you guys are doing the same thing. With that said, I love you guys to all my friends, my followers, and my family. Let's acknowledge the servicemen who protect us every day because these people fight for us. They fight for our freedom. I hope you guys have a great day. I love you all, and always give your life to God because he is going to make your life better. With that said, bye, guys. I'll see you in my next video. Bye. The streets will never make you grow. It's not a seed. It's a gutter. There's no happy endings in this life. So this is my message to you. never love you back.